Hey friends, today I want to address a common issue that is just plaguing the entire community of recording artists using Ableton Live. And this is something that I struggled with really early in my Abletoning. <laughs> Basically what the problem is is that people are recording latency. They're recording with latency into Ableton instead of recording without latency or using the plug-in delay compensation to make their tracks as they played them, okay? And I can explain this a little bit better uh, here in a moment. Um, but let's just take a look at what's going on here. Here's, here's track nine, and as you can see, I've made myself a nice little guitar signal chain here, so it sounds like this. And um, if there's enough interest in this, I will make a video eventually on how to make how to get a great guitar sound using just Ableton devices, because you really can. There's great tools in here. But the subject of this video is trying to figure out how to record without recording latency, okay? So the thing to know is that if I was to record with these settings, this track is armed, and I would just record right into this track, I would be recording with latency, meaning it would play back the audio with the latency, meaning it wouldn't play back the timing that I actually physically played, okay? Let me show you how this works. So what I'm gonna do is, here's track nine with this signal chain, I'm gonna actually duplicate this. So Command D, or alternatively you can right click and go to duplicate. But I've just duplicated this track. Now on this track, I'm gonna leave the auto switch on. So, so you see how there's this monitoring section? It says, when monitoring is active, a track's input is played through its devices so it can be heard at the output, okay? And then on this track, I'm gonna turn the monitoring to off, okay? Now, let's go ahead and record this part. I'm gonna turn this bracket off real quick. I'll back this up and I'll record this part. Okay, so I just recorded this part. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, as you can see, I just recorded it into both of these tracks. And maybe from a bird's eye view, this looks exactly the same. These are exactly the same waveforms. And yes, they are. But let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. What the hell? Do you see what I'm talking about? Look at how far apart these two are. And the only difference is when I recorded is I had the monitor switch turned off on this track. And on this track, I had the monitor switch turned on. These are exactly the same signal chains, okay? Same signal chains in nine and in 10. What's going on here? Let's go ahead and take a listen to the difference. So with this track, I'll turn off my main track. Let's listen. Do you see what's going on? That track is late sound. It sounds like it's late. Now, if I turn on this track, let's take a listen to the one that I recorded without the auto switch on. So let's talk about what's going on here. Essentially, what you're looking at is Ableton committing the latency that exists in your system to the recording if you're listening to your track with the auto switch on. If you're not listening to the track with the auto switch off, it will apply to that track the delay compensation to compensate for the latency that's being created by all of your plugins and your sound card and everything else, okay? Let's look at this another way. So if I go to my preferences, I wanna show you something. I've left Ableton on its standard buffer size. When you, uh, if you've never touched this before, likely your buffer size is at 512 samples. Now, if you crank this down to a lower sample rate, like 128 or 64 or something, you can usually glean out a little bit less latency. And a lot of musicians uh, that use Ableton devices tend to leave their buffer sizes lower like this so that they can get um, as low latency as possible. But that doesn't fix the issue. The issue still exists that there's going to be some little tiny bit, no matter what you do, of latency if you record with the auto switch on. But then you might be thinking, well, dude, I, how am I going to hear my instrument when I'm recording? Well, that's exactly what I want to talk about. 
Hey, just real quick, I wanted to let you know I'm making Ableton Online courses. They'll be covering macro topics like mixing, sound design, composition, songwriting, live performance, and more. And I should say you can learn anything that you want to learn off of YouTube, but much of the time it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for, and the information is, well, just wrong. These courses will be thorough, optimized, and organized to help you take your skills to the next level really fast. And happily, at the time of this video, I am probably less than two months from launching both the songwriting and composition course and the mixing course. So if you want to be notified when those courses are available, just uh, put your email in the link that I'll put in the description and um, in the comments. Awesome, let's get back to it. So you can build a beautiful signal chain here and you can put your sample buffer size real low, like at, you know, 64 or 128, and it's totally playable at that point. But you still need to record a second track with the auto switch off, or with the, the monitoring switch to off, set to off. Because that is the track that's going to have zero latency on it, all right? There's another way to do this. Let's go ahead and look at my sound card. So I'm using a UAD Apollo, and as you can see, this track is muted, and this is the track my guitar is coming down. Right? Now if I unmute this, listen. There's a clean signal underneath of my distorted signal. Let's go ahead and turn these off so you can hear. So what's going on here is that this is what's called direct monitoring. And you've probably seen it on your sound card or seen this word at least before. What this means is that there is a signal directly coming into my sound card and directly out to my ears. This has no latency either. There's zero latency here whatsoever. This is just coming directly to my ears. So when you're recording vocals, guitar, or maybe you have a mic set up and you're recording an amp, or you've got a trumpet, I don't know, whatever it is, sometimes the best solution for monitoring is just listening to the direct signal back into your ears. And most sound cards will have a mixer, right? So you can change the levels. And my UAD card actually has insert effects that I can use and all kinds of other stuff. I even have sends and returns for reverbs and stuff like that, but this is a pretty robust sound card. Um, a lot of you are probably using Focusrite, uh, kind of those little sapphire ones, and a lot of them have right on the front panel a little thing that says direct monitoring. Some of them even have a direct monitoring blend control, okay? The reason that this exists is because of this issue specifically. When you're recording into Ableton, okay, you have to be extremely careful about using this auto switch. So let's talk about this a different way. Ableton Live tries to treat MIDI and audio exactly the same way. So they wanted to have the interface look exactly the same way. And they did this, I think this is a really a cool thing because it helps your right brain work with your left brain a little bit more. And if I go up here and I look at a MIDI track, okay, the auto switch has to be on if this track is armed for me to, for me to get sound. If it's off, I can't play it, right? So I think that they tried to they tried to treat audio exactly the same way. I wish though that there was some sort of warning saying, "Hey, you're about to record latency. Be careful. Make sure you record a track with the auto switch off." Okay. So you know my workflow in all of this is I'll create a track with the auto switch on and make my effects rack. Okay. Like with my guitar, I'll make an effects rack. Right before I record, okay, I'll duplicate this track so I have a second one and turn the auto switch off. Now. Let's say that you don't have the resources to make that track again, okay? Your computer CPU is spiking and stuff. You can always just, after you've recorded and you like the take, you can always just copy your signal chain and put it in the track that you recorded without latency, and then you're done. You know what I mean? You already got it. Or you could just take the audio and drag it up, right? So I hope this video is helpful to you. Um, it's crazy how many people are recording latency into Ableton. It's absolutely nuts. Um, it, I wish that it was better explained right off the bat, but now you know, okay? <laughs> so if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.